Hello friends, this is Pheasant 815 I'm going to do a simple field strip and cleaning of the XDS. This is after its uh, first 50 rounds have gone through it, so it's going to be a little bit dirty, but not horribly dirty. Uh, it has shot the Tula ammo, so I expect it to be a little bit dirtier than uh, if I shot my reloads through it. But let's go ahead. First thing first, uh, we see the trigger is forward on a striker fire pistol. So we're going to assume there's something in the chamber, even though the chamber indicator shows that there's nothing there. Um, the magazine's already been removed. That would be the first step if it wasn't. I'm going to go ahead and visually and physically inspect. You can see there that there's nothing in the chamber. And, in fact, there's nothing in the magazine well. So the weapon has been made safe. This is actually um, one of the first steps, is to pull it back. Pull the slide back. Once the slide is pulled back, and lock with the slide stop. Rotate this lever upward, like such. Then what you can do is you release the slide forward. And when you pull this trigger, which you know is safe to do so now, what's going to happen is the slide's going to be released. So if you point it down, I'm not going to put my hand in front of it because that's going to, if there was a round, it'd shoot your hand. But I like to hold the top, point it in a safe direction, even though you know it's unloaded. Pull that trigger and it'll just slide off. Now it probably kind of looks cool to pull the trigger and fall out, but if you were mistaken, I don't know how it would be possible, but if you were, you'd send a hole through your hand. And I like my hand. I only have two. This is my only left. I kind of like it. Anyway, for the basic field strip, you're, you're done, done with the frame. and Basic cleaning, you're done with the frame. I'm going to do a little wiping on this part in the frame in a second, but for now let's put it off to the side so we have more room on our table. Um, for the slide, just go ahead and compress the sling, spring rather, set that off to the corner here. And then we're going to take out the barrel and I'm going to wipe the slide, but first I'm going to put down blue paper towel to help you see these black parts a little bit better. Alright. Now the slide's got a lot of little pieces in there that in a more full breakdown we might take apart, but only 50 rounds have been through it, so it's not very dirty. And this is a simple breakdown field strip cleaning, so we're not going to do that either. But the uh, I used grease on the barrel, so let's see if I can get a shot of that. You can see how you can still see it's still pretty greasy. So it's still well lubed, and I could shoot probably over 100 rounds without wearing hardly any of that off. But uh, we're going to do a cleaning today. So, first thing I'd like to do is just do a quick wipe. So, I'm going to take just a little patch of my shop towel. I'm just going to wipe around because I don't like to get all dirty needlessly through this. So you can see, just in the barrel, on the outside of the barrel, there was that. Now, you've got a couple things you're going to see here. Part of what you're going to see is 50 rounds of Tula ammo. Uh, and then part of what you're going to see is the fact that even though I cleaned this pistol before I shot it the first time, um, the initial wearing of the pistol, uh, it seems like no matter how well I clean a pistol the first time, after I take and shoot it, um, there's just a lot more crud that gets off after the impact of exploding rounds in the chamber, things going around. Not exploding as in malfunction, but when you fire it, it sets an ignition, creates a small explosion. Oh, I should have showed you that. You see how dark that was a second ago? Um, then just one quick wipe. It's nice and shiny again. I do like how Springfield went ahead and polished that ramp. You can still see how it glistens. Uh, a lot of times we do that to our ramps, but uh, that's already done for us, so that's nice. Alright, so this is dry on the outside so I can handle it without getting caked. And again, that's what that looks like. Nice clean blue piece. I'm just going to take, stick it in the slide. I'm rubbing the exterior walls, and then I'm going to run the top of the slide. And just after 50 rounds, you can even see the tracks. And the front piece here, whoops, if I can show you, where the uh, round, where the extractor is right over here, where the round sits, uh, there's usually a lot of crud right there. That's a good place for a brush use. And we'll get to that in a second. If you can kind of move over the extractor with your finger slightly, you don't want to get any cloth or cotton stuck in there, but you just want to wipe it down nice and light here. 
And then I like to wipe by the muzzle right away too, because otherwise I honestly forget. There's usually just yeah, you can see there's a little semicircle. Because uh, this is where the the round comes out, so there's if there's any residue, it's going to be here. I notice a lot of residue on the ends of uh, shorter barrels. Not really surprising. All right, that looks like a pretty good wipe off. All right. So now we still got to do the inside of the barrel, but otherwise, oh, before we get to that, I guess I want to do this part because this part will be up and done pretty quick. Right where the round comes in, you see there's a little bit of an indent there. That's where the round will start to slide by as it goes into the uh, chamber of the barrel. Uh, I'm just going to rub right there, and you can see that. That's where some gunk's going to build up, just because that's where a little bit of that carbon can build up from the rounds going off. Also, what you're seeing here with all this, this on it, that's not anything with the carbon. That That is is the fact that I shot it. <laughs> I cleaned all this before I shot it the first time, and but now I've shot it. Now I'm going to rotate this lever down, but you got to make sure to put that up. So as soon as I'm done wiping underneath it on the rails there, I'm going to put that lever back up. See, like, that little bit on the rail, that's from it riding back and forth. I don't actually imagine much of that's carbon. I'll wipe down the rear, rear rails here. Again, new pistol. First round's fired through it. Box of 50. So, I'm going to get a little bit of that breaking period underway. Now there was a little bit of grime on the um, connector bar right here. But, uh, so we've wiped off... Oops, if I can figure out how to get in frame here. We've gone ahead and we've wiped off slide rails here and here, the tops of them, tops of the other side, right here. Um, seen some wear points with just the first rounds already. The very tip of the back slide rail, and this groove here of the slide rail on the right side. Uh, not a big deal, and in fact, that's actually a, a good sign because the gun is actually breaking in. All right, so the frame. Since we're not disassembling it today, it's clean and good. We're going to put a little more uh, greaser oil in those spots, depending on your preference and honestly what you're planning on doing with it. If it's just going to be for the range or if you're going to carry it. Since one day this will be a, primarily a carrying pistol, uh, I'm going to use grease more often than not because grease stays where it's supposed to. Um, Springfield supplied a brush. It's the same brush they supply, supply with their bigger 45s. Got some patches. I don't know if I'm going to get this completely clean with my limited time left, but uh, we'll see. First, I like to take a dry patch. You may ask, you may ask, why am I taking a dry patch? Well, I'm taking a dry patch first because any loose carbon crud, if I can just push that out, I don't have to get it wet where it sticks, so I can just push it out. Um, this is a good place where if you have a boar snake, you run the boar snake through. Now, I know this is kind of silly in a 3.3 inch barrel to run the boar snake, but why is that that silly? If you can get the loose carbon crud out of there, then you're not making a carbon cake that you have to clean out later when it gets all sticky and grimy with your solvents. But yeah, that, you notice this doesn't look too bad there. I mean, that's that's hardly anything. Usually I see a lot more, but usually I shoot a lot more. But if you go ahead and see if I can show you down the barrel. Whoop. Looks pretty good. There's not crud piled up. Now, after you shoot for a while, you'll see some crud in there. It's good to knock that dry crud out. But uh, now I get the mainly part that mainly. Ugh! I mainly got the buildup out of there. All right. Since it didn't look very dirty, I'm just gonna use some spray nitro solvent gun cleaner. I use a number of things. Today I'm just gonna use this. I use Hops Nine primarily, but. Alright, put the solvent on the patch, run the patch through. I like to go ahead and give it a little twist so that kind of works through the grooves. It's a right twist, so I turn to the right. Or 
clockwise. For those of you who do not like turning left or right, oops, that's the barrel. Honestly, with a nylon brush, I see no reason why not to go down the barrel, but I just don't because um, I just don't. <laughs> I don't have a really good reason for it. That and somewhere out there in YouTube land, someone's going to have a small heart attack if I did. I don't want to be responsible for sending it anyway to the hospital this morning. <sighs> because the barrel's so short, I sent it through a number of times, but it looks nice and cruddy there. Now I'm going to take, since it's a little wet with solvent, and rub the exterior parts of the barrel. Because remember, before we just wiped it down dry, places where carbon's going to build up is all around the front here, like where the, where the bullet gets chambered. And I'm going to run out of space on this card. So I'm going to keep doing this till it runs out. Alright, and then I'm just going to take this piece that I've already run, and just kind of run it around so that solvent can soak in while I go get a second SD card. Um, never underestimate the, the power of a solvent if you just let it set for a second. I'm not saying walk away for two days and come back. I'm just saying get it wet and come back. Alright, got a second SD card so now I'm back and going again. Couldn't help myself that after I wiped everything down I needed to kind of cloth wipe it again. So we're not 100% done, but we're mostly done. I'm going to try to show you the barrel up close here. You can see here some light barrel wear. Oh, there's a good shot of it. I can get it to hit the light right. There you go. So that was a lot of what we got on the outside of the barrel there. It wasn't just the carbon, but it was the uh, outside of the barrel. Now, I don't think that's unusual wear. I don't think that's excessive wear. Uh, I think you got to realize that whether you get a Glock or a Springfield or a m and whatever, you're going to have the a lot of friction on here. So you, you, you oil it, you grease it, you, you put your lubricant on it, which I did. But the initial wear is going to be the most severe. And then from there it will get best, better. It's the, uh, that which didn't set into the metal. But anyway, um, pretty clean on the outside. I still got to run the patches to dry out the inside. I let the solvent sit in there. A little bit longer as I got the new card. So we're going to go ahead and run another patch there. I'm not going to make you watch all the patches run through there. So if, uh, if it needs more than just a dry patch and a lubing patch, well then I'll probably just let you go somewhere else for a bit and turn you back on. Once we're done. Now you don't want to be seeing any of that carbon on there. And again, honestly, a little bit of that could be just the coating inside the barrel. Alright. Let's put a more squirt of the solvent on there. Hope get whatever else is still sticking to my sides. The uh, brush they provide at Springfield for you is a nylon brush. So, you know, I know some people get really concerned about when you come back in the barrel through the muzzle, but uh, honestly, that's the way it's been done for a long, long time. And and really, with nylon brushes, your brushes, if that nylon's going to hurt uh, your steel barrel, um, yeah, you, that's just not going to happen. So, don't worry your minds about that. Now, if you grab one of your brass brushes, is it going to hurt steel? No. Might it less than beautify the finish? Yeah, possibly. So, just be a little bit more careful when you come back in with the brass. If you're going to use anything other than brass, I would question that's necessity, unless you didn't clean it regularly. If you're getting a gun from a pawn shop, maybe, or a, a gun you purchased that's been used quite a bit, then, then maybe there's a need for that. But uh, I'm a big fan of solvent. I'm just using solvent to get that job done. We have another dry patch here. And actually after this, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I like to do at the end. And then uh, assemble the gun for you, and then I'll come back later. Because I like to do this until it's nice and white, white, and obviously it's not. But let's just say, for the sake of everyone's time today, 
I'm gonna put this off to the side here. I'm gonna show you what I do once it's all clean and the patches come out clear. I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, just oil. Now this happens to be rim oil, but it could be any kind of gun oil. I'll put it on a patch, and I'm just gonna send it through. You know what's weird about this is I do this just to make sure that barrel doesn't have any residue solvent in it. To make sure if anything's in it, there's a light film of oil rather than a film of solvent in it. But honestly, um, now this wasn't totally clean, so you expect to see a little there. But honestly, um, there's something about uh, the lubricant versus the solvent that when you put a patch in with lubricant, a lot of times I'll see, even though it's been running clean, a little bit of uh, coloration come on it, on the patch. But uh, again, I don't expect this patch to come out clean. I expect it to be rather filthy because the patch wasn't coming clean with the solvent right now. I'm just showing you the last step I do. So I'll come back and do this better later, but for the sake of time. So after I run an oiled patch, not a greased patch, not a patch with that sticky oil, but just like the little watery stuff, the rim oil stuff that like, looks like water. I'll run that through there. That's mainly why I have that. And I'll see it's nice and glistening. See how shiny it is? Ooh, shiny. And I'll take a, a dry patch. Whoops. I'll take a dry patch and I'll run that through. Usually I run it through twice, but this barrel is only 3.3 uh, inches long, so let's run it through once. What I'm doing is now basically trying to lightly wipe off the oil I just put on it. I don't want to have extra oil on there. Ugh, I'll do it twice. I just can't help but do it twice, even though it's small. And what that does is that takes off a good amount of that oil I put on, but it leaves it in the nooks and crannies. And uh, that way it's clean, it's dry, but the last thing is not solvent, it's oil. Um, that the barrel last. Let's see if I can show you inside there. Still shiny, but not quite as shiny. But uh, that's not going to interfere with any of the firing of the bullets through that barrel from the round in the chamber. And alright, so now the outside of this barrel is very clean and dry. Or for the sake of argument today, we're just going to say the inside of the barrel is clean. It's not. It's clean enough for now. If I could, I could go shoot it again very easily. In fact, this would be as far as I go if I knew I was going to shoot it again tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, it might be another seven days before I can. So, anyway, that's the barrel's taken care of. Uh, go ahead and I brushed the outside, which looks basically like this. Especially want to focus in on the piece. This has got more pieces than a Glock on top, where you can have uh, crud buildups. So you've got two kind of platforms up here. You want to get on each side and in between especially along with the ridges underneath the chambering and then I brush inside that groove even though there's really not any carbon that piles up there but I like to do it each time because there never will be but anyway that's where you brush there after a bigger day shooting sometimes I'll do a brush on the outside nylon brush but all this has been done but in here I left this alone now you don't want to get a lot of carbon in that firing pin hole, if you can see the hole right there, because that'll just knock the crud you're busting off into where the striker comes out. Now earlier you saw me just wipe, that's wiping. Now I'm going to be scrubbing some crud off. So on my Glock, because that thing runs filthy, filthy, dirty, I don't really worry about it. But since this is new and I don't know how this runs filthy, filthy, I'm going to turn it upside down. So when I scrub it, the crud falls away uh, thanks to gravity. I don't have to import that or anything yet. So I'm scrubbing. I'm scrubbing right where the bullet will get chained. Well, go into. The, cannot speak for where it will be hit by the striker. Why can't I keep that in frame? And where the ejector port is and the loaded chamber indicator. There's a lot of little doohickeys in there. Get crud out from in between, and that's where the bullet slams into the back after it's fired. When the striker comes out, that hole hits it. The round will come out. The bullet will come out. This part. The rest of the round, the chamber, or not the chamber, the um, casing, will be slammed back here. And sometimes you'll see some brass imprinting or circular wear over time. But uh, just make sure it's clean. You got the small part of the brush on there for a reason, so you can get in there. I'm just going to turn it sideways. Let's get the scrub in there. Put all that little crud out of there.
Now you don't want to spit in it so you keep your moist air out of it, but your mouth is rather dry and you can give it a little get that crud out of there, that might be okay. Man, that tool of stuff is filthy. Yeah, if these were 50 reloaded rounds, they wouldn't have looked would have looked half that bad after twice the rounds. I'm not complaining about toolets. I buy it. Should do a case and all. Um, Alright, so now it's been wiped. I'm going to take now, again, where's my, one of these patches was hardly used yet. This one's the one with oil. Spray just a little bit of solvent on this. Just because I want to wipe over where I scrubbed. Now I already had solvent on it. I already scrubbed it. I'm going to work in there. Now I don't want to get the the patch caught underneath, see how that comes up, the uh, chamber indicator. I don't want it to get pinched in there and I have a little cloth caught in there. I don't want cloth anywhere in this area. So, one way you can do this, never ever use cloth there. Okay, that's great. Other uh, thing you do is you can just be careful. I'm going to hold it down with my finger so as I pull up it's not going to try to catch it underneath like a jaw. Alright. Making sure to get a light coat of all that. A little visual inspection there. And since I got a little bit of solvent on there, I'll just wipe the inside of the slide again. Now, here's a tricky part. I like to take the brush and rub it back. Now you can do it upside down, but there was hardly anything there. I'm just more of a demonstration. And then I'm going to take that solvent patch, use a thin piece again, so I can get inside that little groove. Now most of the time it's not too bad, you don't need to do this. Today would be one of those days. But, if I always do it, it never will get that bad. And honestly, since this is the first time I've shot the pistol, that's my own pistol, this particular pistol, there's inside where the um, grooves of the frame run on the slide, there's a, tr there's a little track. I imagine there's going to be a lot more wear in there, there's going to be this one, probably one of the higher wear points. So I want to get any of that stuff that comes out, and I imagine a lot of that black is actually the fact that it's a new gun. It's one of the first times I've shot it. This patch just had wiped the oil off, so that's clean. Scrubbing in there. Yeah, nice and filthy. Get that clean in there. Okay. I'm just visually inspecting that face there. So you can see there's just maybe a little bit to wipe off. Not a big deal. Got another piece of my shop towel. You can use a whole one. I've seen people use a whole one. I think it's harder to see when you use a whole thing in there. Plus I'm cheap. Alright, striker. Now this up here possibly is carbon, but I honestly think that little schmutz the fact that this piece of metal runs up and down really quickly when I fire around and a new round comes in, so it's going to wear inside there. It's another wear point. I'm going to hold it down so it doesn't try to bite my shop towel. Get in there as much as I can, which is limited because of all the grooves in there. Alright. Just going to stick it through. Use my brush. Just put a little bit of force on it so it just kind of gyrates in there. One little piece just doesn't want to. There we go. I won't call it shiny in there, but if I hit the light, right? You can kind of see through the circle. I won't call it shiny back there, but it's been cleaned off. And now I could go and polish it, but that seems a little unnecessary at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the pistol in just a second. Again, Kind of like I like a light coat of oil in there. I like a light coat of oil. And coating's maybe right or the wrong word, but a light coat of oil on my parts. So all over the outside of the barrel, I'm just gonna wipe it. And you can see here the difference between the shiny, that's got a little puddle on it. That's actually a bad example. Where it's just got a light coat and see how it's so dry from being cleaned that it just soaks that right up. So I'm just gonna get my fingers into it. light invisible coat. See how it really blackens it up. You can see the shine hit on the light. Okay, I'm not really going to worry about that coming off on anything. A little bit more on my fingers. 
Caleb, can you make a rotisserie? Now I know some of you might be going, oh, you're not supposed to lube all over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait till I'm done before you can tell me how I'm doing it wrong. I'm going to put it all the way out on the outside of the barrel. Because guns do not like rusting, and I do not like them rusting either. Now, do you have to do this part every time? Absolutely not. This part with rubbing the light coat of oil like you're making a rotisserie chicken, that's something I do. In fact, I don't see many other people doing it, so maybe that's something you just don't want to do, and that's fine. I respect that. But I'd also appreciate you just using constructive criticism as well as if you do not like it. Now I'm going to take, and I'm going to basically wipe it off. What's the point of it? Um, if I took this towel and tried to wipe off all the oil from my hands, they're still slick. Yeah, that's not that radically different than the outside of this pistol slide. And I like to use my um, actual gun cloth, a cotton cloth, when I'm done done, just to wipe it all the way on the outside. But I do that once I get it assembled. And I'm just going to go ahead and basically wipe off that light coating of oil, knowing full well that most of it won't come off. And your manufacturer says put no oil drops in the slide there. Okay, don't do that. Alright, and on the slot, and on the barrel actually, the part where I set it down is already, you can see, taking the oil off. And the other side it's, I don't want to say it's soaked in because it's metal and not wood, but uh, I think it kind of filled those pores. But I just wipe it off, especially right here, I don't want any kind of anything right there because that's where it's going to build up. Anything that's moist is going to build up. Not moist as in wet with water, but moist as in with oil. It's going to get little pieces of crud there. And since I'm preparing this to go back in the holster for concealed carry, um, I don't want anything to build up because the holster, when you push it in the holster, the little pieces of the newer holster are going to come up and get a little bit of those leather suede kind of dust particles on the outside of the gun, which is why I'm going to wipe it again with a cloth after I'm done, and inside the barrel a little bit. All right. And since this gun's going to be in a concealed carry format, I'm going to go ahead and put the oil away. And I'm going to grab the grease, because the grease stays where I want it to. It doesn't move all around. And I've got a application technique. I always hate getting this thing out, so I always have to bite it and pull it off. So I have an application technique that I like to use, but your mileage may vary, and good for you. I'm going to take, in this patch here, usually I use a... I have some styrofoam pieces that, you know, you get a pound of uh, hamburger, you get some sausages in a six pack, and it's got that plastic uh, kind of foamy underneath. Well, after I make the sausages, I rinse that off, I'll suds it up, let it sit overnight, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and use that for something like this, and then I'll use it once it gets filthy, I'll throw it away and it'll hold all my junk, but for now I'm just going to use this patch. I just put a little bit of grease there. I like how it's a nice red, it really gets on all, it, it'll it gets on your clothes, it'll leave a nice little mark reminding you that you don't want to do that. And then once I get done squirting out, I pull the plunger back up, so it kind of suck up that last little bit so it doesn't keep <laughs> farting out grease. Only four minutes left on my timer again. Oh my goodness, I need to empty these SD cards. Anyway, I'm going to get a little bit of oil on there. That's not a little bit, that's a lot. Did I say oil? I meant grease. And I'm just going to rub it around. I'm going to leave the, oops, I intended to leave the right side because that's the part that's exposed, but I got that. No big deal, I'll just wipe that off. Again, wiping grease off is like wiping oil off. Now I'm getting on the top, which will be exposed, but I want to ride it inside the slide a number of times before I wipe that off. I'll do that once the gun's fully assembled. I'll put a coat of this grease all up in there. I don't want to put any in the groove where the spring goes, because I don't want that spring to have any other way to get out of there. I want it to stay where it's supposed to. And now I'm going to hold, or I'm not putting any grease in the bottom and on the muzzle, so that way I can get the whole barrel greased. Now why use grease here? Because if I used oil, eventually it could slowly move down and get on my pant leg, get on my holster, or when I use oil, and I, once you run a little, or once I use grease here, rather, I can keep speaking correctly, I'm going to pull the excess off the side here on the barrel, um, it doesn't move very much, it just kind of stays where it's supposed to. And again, I'll hold it up a little closer for you. One thing you have to be careful with using the Q-tips, 
is you don't want to leave little cotton nonsense behind. So when it starts to get worn, just use a different side. You, a little bit of grease goes so far, you don't need to try to be cheap with uh, the application of it or with the fact that or the fact that you're using q-tips which are not overly expensive. I'm going to put my very greasy barrel there and then I'm just going to run because this is about use and I don't want to use some slide parts I'm just going to run a little bit right up top here which is where I know it wears with the top of the barrel shroud. I'm going to do it a little bit on the side of the slide on the ejection port side lightly and a little bit on the wall. Now I'm not getting in the grooves that'll come later. Alright? There's that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the Q-tip on the frame. Not the whole thing, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the slide lever down. And on the rails, I'm going to put light. Basically, put it on and try to wipe it off. That's how you put grease on. You put it on and you try to wipe it off. Put it on. And try to wipe it off. You will not be successful in getting it off with the Q-tip. That's fine. You don't really want it off. You just want to wipe it like you want it off. If that makes any sense for you. Maybe, maybe not. Now I'm hitting the slide rails. This is where the slide will go back and forth. Good amount of friction there. Keeping away from where the, it comes in, I'm going to use my clean Q-tip there just to wipe it off since I'm here in this area again. I just want to make sure there's grease on these rails. That way it functions nice and smoothly. Don't exactly remember where I left off, so I'm going to start kind of replaying. What I've done is used a Q-tip to apply a layer of grease to the outside of the barrel. Um, and then focusing especially on using the Q-tip to apply the grease to the slide rails on the frame making sure not to get any in internal moving parts of the frame but just on the slide rails making sure this lever is up um, now I use the residual grease after there is no more to get off just on the side walls of the slide and the roof where on the top of the slide where the barrel shroud will rub making sure not to put any oil where the manufacturer says not to alright I'm going to take the barrel very carefully because it's covered in grease and I'm going to slide it in its little house where it wants to live. I'm going to take my spring. Now, on the spring, don't use solvent on this. Don't use grease on this. Don't use, don't squirt it with oil. Just take a clean, dry cloth. And there, that's all there is on there. Now, if you run it harder, after you shoot it longer, after uh, a lot more rounds have gone through the gun, to actually go ahead and brush through there and use some oil on it. Mm. Alright, but uh, it's very easy to over mess with the spring. So I'd recommend general, generally just don't mess with it. Fat part goes forward, fat spring. Oh, the one exception to that would be this part right here that comes out the front. Because um, that, of course, will get a lot of residual blast. Okay, now that I've got the spring in there, it's really that easy to assemble. It's slide, barrel, spring. Once you get into the smaller parts and the frame and then the slide, okay. But even then, that's not too bad. Not where we're going today. This is a simple disassembly, reassembly, and cleaning video. So I've taken my oil sides, making sure the slide, breakdown lever, takedown lever. Oh, goodness, I cannot speak this morning. Takedown lever is up. Slide it right in the groove. Now, because there's grease there, you might see a little pool up there if you've put too much. But this is not my first rodeo, so I didn't put too much. So I'm gonna move it back and use the slide stop lever to hold the slide back. Basically, we're reversing how we took it down. Once it's back, I'm gonna rotate my lever forward, and I'm gonna let it come forward. Now, you can let it slam forward, but being that I'm just putting it together the first time, I like to let it come together slowly. I like to, even though there's no magazine and obviously no rounds have been chambered, I like to just peek in there. Yep, nothing in the chamber, safe direction. Now, because I've got a layer of grease on there, which was intentional, I'm going to take, I'm going to run that slide. And if you look in the back there, 
ever so lightly. There's nothing on the one side, and on their side there's a little bit of a glisten. Because I put the right amount of grease in there. If you see it <laughs> farting out both sides, or big red blobs, okay, you over overdid it to a degree of too, way too much, but just wipe it down. And still see here the layer of grease that's on the barrel? Shroud. The reason I'm doing this, I want the grease that's on the barrel shroud, the barrel on the slide uh, slide rail grooves and the slide rails, or frame slide rails. I want it to get, move it all around to where it goes. You see how smooth it sounds? Excellent. When it was dirtier, it sounds, you can almost hear the crud in there. But now it's clean and it's running smooth. If it's running dry, you hear it kind of falling on itself a little bit more. Now, I, the reason I don't just drop it is the round does kind of decelerate the slide a little bit, but that's not a big deal, so. Um, you're going to tick a lot of people off if they see you do this without a round in there. Okay, sorry you're offended. And you're going to get a lot of people offended if uh, I have a round in there and I slam it down. Alright, be offended. And you see a lot of people get offended if you ride the slide down on an empty chamber or, on a, or even on a live round. I don't recommend a live round, especially with 45 ACP and 9mm. You can kind of get away with it a little bit. Not recommended. But 45, I just you can't get that round up and in there without it pushing. So... Anyway, it's in a safe direction. I'm just going to peek again. I'll let you peek. This is what I'm doing here. I know that there's the chamber indicators down. I know there's nothing in there. I know there's no magazine in there. But because you're always double, triple, quadruple checking, if you peek in there, oh, look, I'm not going to be able to even chamber around with blow it back that far. Look, there's nothing there. Safe direction. Boom. Now what I'm going to do, my very last thing, is the extra grease. I'm just going to wipe off. Now what I'm going to, I'm actually not going to take too much off. I'm just going to wipe it because I'm going into the holster as if I don't want that grease all over my holster and all over me. And then I'm going to run it again. See what comes out, just a little bit. Check, nothing there. And now I'm ready to reholster this bad boy. Thanks for watching. Be safe, be smart. Always read your manual. Have a good day.